Okay, so we're out and about on another walk, and today I'm at Ingbirchworth. Uh, I've parked up at Scout Dyke Reservoir, and I'm doing the Pennystone Boundary Walk. Uh, it's about 16 miles, so give it seven or eight hours. It should be just a leisurely walk. So anything interesting along the way, I'll take a video clip or a snapshot. So this is the first nice bit, bit, nice little bridge with a, what looks like a stream or a beck running under it. Okay, so I'm uh, attempting to follow written instructions today. Uh, downloaded it off the internet. But I've got a map just in case. But hopefully it should be straightforward and well signposted. All right, good stuff. So there's Scout Dyke Reservoir. There's another one there in the distance. Okay, so that's the way marker I'm following, and it's quite easy. So uh, I've not even had to look at the instructions; just keep following the way markers. Okay, so I'm up at Royd Moor. And, uh, don't know what this is, like a little uh, enclosure. In memory of John G. Smith, 
1921 to 2013 donated this piece of land But I need to move on. I'm doing a bit of road walking now. So I can see something on the horizon that looks like some kind of tower. So I'm just going to try and zoom in on it. And, uh, what is that? Okay, really, I can see. <laughs> I'm just trying to hold the camera steady. There we go. You can see it on the screen only just, but can't make out what it is. We'll look into it later on.
Okay, so not seen a bench like this before. It's made out of uh, what looks like uh, galvanized steel. Okay, so crossed over the River Don back there and uh, I should be approaching something called Bull House Hall so I don't know what to expect uh, I know there's, there's like a chapel close by and uh, I am aiming to, to see that and film a bit of it actually this could be Bull House Hall, perhaps. Right, okay, so there's Bull House Hall. Okay. 
and this is a Bull House Chapel some instructions here if you would like to go into the chapel bring that number for the code for the key safe on the left oh but look at that nice bit of history there Yeah, so just a quick close-up of Bullstone Hall. Okay, so just leaving behind what was, uh, well, what is Bullstone Hall and Bullstone Chapel. So 
so no doubt I'll put a few dates on the screen give you an idea of how old it is but great yeah I thought when I was first approaching it I thought the chapel was the hall and I was thinking to myself there's a chapel nearby somewhere but then a gentleman uh, presumably came from the hall just around the corner pointing me in the right direction and uh, so that was quite lucky that otherwise I think I might have been wandering around here looking for the chapel but yeah nice bit of history there okay so look at it I'm still on track and I've got quite a lot of miles to do so onward and upward okay so there's that tower I spotted earlier still don't know what it is is it an old chimney mill or something if later on when I get to the top if I'll see that chimney if I'll get close to it to see what it is Okay, so there's a building there that looks like it needs some assistance in keeping upright.
Okay, well, I think I've come across a chicken farm here, so three, three have escaped. Let's have a look. Okay, well, I'm still ploughing on. I'm somewhere at a place or village called Castle Green. Just crossing loads of stiles. There's another one here. Okay, well, I think I'm just going to rest and just have something to eat here. Wow, there's a, there's a great view to my left, but just uh, very important with this bench. It's a memory to somebody called Caroline Williams. spend about 15 minutes here I think and uh, it's it's got an incredible view here of the viaduct so if I just move over to the fence and zoom in on it tower in the background. Find it. Should be able to work out 
name of the church when I get home. And I've had a good look around Google Earth. Okay, so I just passed uh, something called Delft House. It's just a nice farm there. And uh, I should be passing something called Tinker House. So that's on the trail here. So yeah, I just found myself in these nice shaded woods. Well, this looks like Tinker House. Not sure what to expect, if it's all derelict or not. Oh no, there's some of it's nice and habitable. This must be Tinker House.
think I'm on the last three miles maybe so or could be four I don't know but I've done most of it from looking on the map and I've managed to do it by following the instructions really uh, it's four o'clock now in the afternoon and uh, I set off at quarter to eleven from the reservoir and I've I feel I've done a good pace so the the whole trail is supposed to be 16 miles so you know I'm thinking it shouldn't take more than five and a half or six hours but who knows I mean it's four o'clock now I might be still wandering about at seven o'clock I don't know I've not had a big look at the map I don't like looking too too intently because it's not going to make any difference I'm going to have to walk back whatever so but I, I'm thinking an hour and a half a walking lift possibly maybe two at the worst uh, as long as I don't get lost that is but it's been quite easy to navigate uh, there's always those penny stone boundary markers but you've got to know you're coming up to the turn off as well because you walk straight past it and then markers won't do anything if you've if you've missed it so you have to kind of know in advance where you're going to go so I followed the written instructions for pro probably 90 odd percent of the way but yeah it's, it's quite it's a nice walk actually it's one I'd do again uh, uh, I think uh, that old 16th century hall was was possibly the highlight I forget what it was called now and I were only there a few hours ago oh, it'll come to me in a moment but yeah anyway anything interesting on the way back uh, I'll film it as always but for now just enjoy all the woodland and stuff Okay, so I'm just about a half hour off before getting back to the start at uh, Scout Dyke Reservoir. Now I've passed this spot a few times. Uh, it's called Gunthwaite Dam. Uh, I think it's maybe some kind of fishing club now. I'll just see what it says on that, that signpost. Put my reading glasses on. It's a fishing club, there we go. It's a nice spot. Okay, well, the road's closed, but that's just to cars. Uh, been up there before, that'll take you to Gunthwaite Hall, uh, that's nice, 16th century building and farmyard, uh, it's great, you know it's a great explore, I featured it on a past video, uh, so today I'm sticking to the Pennystone boundary walk which says that this is part of it, so I thought I will might as well stick to it by the letter. I normally would stray a bit but it's it's been pleasant it's quite easy a lot of it uh, because it's like decent track like this and not too many steep hills so it's a 16 miler and uh, 
if I set off at quarter to eleven and I reckon I'll finish for quarter past five. So what's that? Six and a half hours, it's not so bad. I think I've stopped 20 minutes for lunch and then I'm always, because I'm filming bits and bobs and placing the camera, <laughs> there's a bit of faffing about that takes up a bit of time. So if you're just doing the whole walk, uh, you could do it in six hours really. Nice steady pace. So this is a nice shaded bit after all that sunshine. Okay, well, I just stopped here to have a bit of a drink of water and notice a nice bit of old pathway or something here. Uh, looks like, I don't know, is it uh, an ancient drinking trough or something where animals would come in, uh, have a drink and a rest and then set off again. It's just a nice little... about walkway <sighs> kind of marker stone there could use that just to, to sit down I mean the water looks a bit stale in there but it's interesting I haven't a clue what it is, but it's you know it's definitely man-made and looks looks like it was done a long time ago and had a purpose. Okay, well, that was Car Lodge Farm back there, the clip you've just seen. And uh, I'm only a few, a couple hundred metres from the road, I think. And then I just crossed the road, and then I'm back at Sky Dyke Reservoir. So I think that's it, really. I'm kind of done, so thanks very much for watching. And uh, hope you found some things interesting on here. And uh, if you live close by the area and you haven't done the Pennystone boundary walk, then I can recommend it. It's really good. It's, uh, it's better than I thought it was going to be. It's what I had planned for a while, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll do it when I can't figure where else to go. So we're already planned and didn't have time to arrange anything else and uh, I was well surprised how good it was. I think Bull House Chapel uh, and Bull House Hall they were worth seeing you know you get a glimpse going back in time for 500 years okay so we'll see you on my next walk and uh, you might see a clip of Sky Dyke <laughs> Reservoir to finish off the video okay
Okay, so I just got to the end of this road, car lane, and then I realised I'd missed a turn off. So I've made my, my way back. So I'm back on this rail bridge uh, that I filmed. And I did see the footpath earlier on, and I just walked past it. But then when I got to the road, I thought the car park seems quite a long way away. And I realised, yep, I missed it. So I've done a U-turn, I've made my way back. It'll only cost me, what, 15, 20 minutes. It's all part of hiking. And I'm going to get the footpath down here. I'm doing the, the Peniston boundary way. <laughs> and I'm not going to falter at the last minute. So I've just added about half an hour to walk. That's all, a bit more exercise. OK, so let's get back on track. So somewhere down here on the right, there's a footpath. And I should cross the railway line again, but rather than over it, I'm wondering if I'm going to cross under it or actually on the line itself. Well, we'll soon see. But just round here is where I missed the turn off. <coughs> I saw it, but I didn't think you know, so convinced that I just stay on this car lane. There we go. We're off up here. Got to do it right. <laughs> <laughs> 